it can be scary out here for women. One of the cool things I did want to bring up, um, and Teresa, this is more so for you, but you actually started rather recently a pretty cool Facebook group to kind of help with uh, the family members of um, the transgender people. You want to tell everybody a little bit about that? Yes. um, I just started a Facebook group called Brace the Rainbow, meaning bracing up and supporting the not just transgender community but also the lgbtq in general um for anyone who uh is on the other side of supporting the the person that uh is transgender otherwise um because there's a lot there that uh family members and friends and and associates don't quite understand um and this is for you know i mean i'm i'm focusing a little bit on truckers in the lgbtq community but i'm also focusing in general just with family support for anyone who needs it and it's a private group um totally confidential so that they can uh express their opinions and views and feelings um about their struggles in in the community also we can add to that um in this group, she was very, very particular about everything. She won't even add me into the group because I'm a member of the LGBTQ community and she doesn't want people to kind of get offended. Like, you know, if the spouse or loved one of a transgender person is in there and they're asking questions, she doesn't want them to feel like they have to like be on their P's and Q's because they're, they're transgender or otherwise a uh, friend or spouse is in there with them. So it, it's a safe place for them to come and ask questions and learn things that can maybe help them with what they're going through. But also, you know, we provide um, education, you know, uh, we post things that uh, terminology vocabulary is very, um, there's a lot of it to learn <laughs> and uh, just things that, people need to be aware of and, and again, can help support uh, their significant other. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you said, you know, that way they don't have to censor what they're saying. Cause that's true. You don't want them to feel like they can't just come out and ask with it, whatever question they may have. Correct. So I was going to ask you, Kira, have you ever had issues? Cause we know you're a flat better and that is some hard work. <laughs> have you ever had issues with, you know, guys not thinking that a woman can be a flat better. <laughs> All the time. Um, How much time do we have? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, usually, it's when I have to deal with my tarts. Um, although Teresa has had an issue, and I'll let her tell you in a minute. Um, but there was uh, several incidents where, um, you know, young men see me out there doing my thing, and they're like, "Oh." You know, you want me to put those tarps away for you? And I usually, it, when I when I hear that, sometimes I'll be nice. I'm like, no, no, thank you. I got it. But if they're very insistent or just plain rude, I'll tell them, yeah, okay. You can put that blue one away for me. And for anyone that doesn't know, my blue tarps are uh, steel tarps. And furthermore, for people who don't know, a steel tarp weighs about 150 pounds. And it's kind of awkwardly shaped. And, it, you know, it's really big. So... In order to pick it up, you pretty much have to go from the ground to your shoulder to be able to actually get it up into where I keep it. And pretty much every time that somebody has tried to prove their manliness to me by picking it up and throwing it up into the headache rack, they they can't. They can't get it up on their shoulder or, or whatever. And when I say it's like homemade chocolate ice cream, you know whenever they can't do it and I walk over and I tell them okay thanks for all the help I'll take it from here and <laughs> I literally pick it up from the ground straight up to my shoulder and then a lot of times I will walk around my truck climb up on the catwalk and then just basically from my shoulder straight into the headache rack and they stare at me like oh <laughs> okay not to mention she gets up on the load and carries it across the load as well. So depending on how high it is. <laughs> I'll admit right now I would never be able to do that. <laughs> I was wondering if that was he, I was wondering if that's what he was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, guys, we'll be right back with Tail Lights with the Bums. Just stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes. This blog on TNCRadio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Five ways to handle sickness on the road as a truck driver. Being sick on the road is one of the worst situations a truck driver could be in. As if being sick isn't bad enough, sickness on the road is 10 times worse. If you're sick at work, you can simply go home for the day and rest. This isn't the case for truck drivers. Truck drivers are hundreds and sometimes thousands of miles from their home. When a truck driver gets sick, it affects their ability to deliver their load on time. They also lose money while trying to recover. As a trucker, it's important to know how to handle sickness on the road. Here are five tips for you. Stay hydrated. Drinking water and electrolytes have a ton of benefits while you're sick. Water helps replace the fluids lost while loosening up mucus. Hot liquids also have benefits as well. The steam from hot liquids helps relieve congestion and soothe the sore throat. Stay clear of sugary drinks. They'll dehydrate you. Rest. Sometimes the best thing you can do while being sick is rest. Your health's more important than getting a load delivered on time. Plus, it can be dangerous to drive while you're sick. Take a day or two to rest and get better. Continuing to work while being sick will only drag out the healing time. Take medicine. If you start to feel sick, get medicine as soon as possible. Vitamin C supplements are great immune boosters. Also, avoid eating unhealthy, greasy foods. Eating properly keeps you healthy and boosts your immune system. If you're already sick, check to see which over-the-counter medicine would help the most. Talk to your dispatch. Let dispatch know what's going on. If you're sick, you may not be able to perform your daily duties, or you may not be able to drive at all. Don't rush recovery time. Rushing recovery time can result in re-injuring yourself. Truck drivers know that if the truck's parked, then they're not making money. It's better to take a week off to recover than try to work when you're not ready and further injuring yourself. This blog on TNCRadio.live was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Hot Shots Secret presents Steve Summers Overnight Drive nightly at midnight Eastern, 11 Central on TNCRadio.live or download the app .tncradio.live. Hey drivers, did you hear music on TNCRadio.live that you really liked? Or maybe you heard us interview an author of a book you'd like to read or listen to. You can get the books, music, and other products you hear about by going to our website at www.tncradio.live and clicking on the shopping cart. Welcome back with Tail Lights with the Bombs. We were just speaking with our guest, Kiara and Teresa. So I did have a question. What is, because I know you guys have um, been trucking, well, you've been on the road for about 18 months. You guys are kind of new to trucking. But what has been the weirdest load you guys have ever hauled since your flat betters? And you guys usually carry some interesting things. I would say it was the elevator. Um, yeah, actually, we uh, we hauled it, the entire setup um, for an elevator for a building uh, they were building. And I, basically, you go to this place, and they don't have like a set, you know, everything's put together really nice and neat and everything. It's quite literally, they Tetris that thing together on your truck. And then you have to find a way to strap it. And they've got, uh, you know, 50,000. Well, no, it can't be 50. It was about 46,000 pounds worth of equipment held together by tiny little pieces of wood. So wow. you, can't, you can't really strap it. Yeah, you can't strap it super tight. And then we had to tarp it on top of that. So you're trying to figure out where to step and where to go. But nothing's actually the same as you walk down the trailer. So uh, quite literally at one point getting off the trailer, I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. So I sat down and slid like a fun slide all the way down. <laughs> I could see Larry doing that 100%. Oh, I could go back up and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we should probably let everybody know that 
You have two pets on the truck. The first one is Peanut. We want to tell us about Peanut, and then we're going to get into the newest one. <laughs> um, well, Peanut is a calico cat, and she, I got her um, when she was about four months old. She was very um, attached to her litter. They, the people I got her from did not actually separate her the way they should have so that she would not develop a really big bond. And so when I got her, she was very scared. She probably spent about three days in the top bunk. And uh, she's finally, after, after about, uh, on the fourth day, she finally decided to come down and eat something. And, uh, you know, fast forward, now she, basically she thinks this is her truck. She lays across the dash. Um, her favorite thing to do is when we're in heavy traffic, she will get up in the dash and clean herself in front of everyone. <laughs> like, I keep telling her it's not ladylike, but she doesn't want to listen. <laughs> Do you get strange looks from people when they see a cat on your dash? Um, usually it's uh, it's astonishment. Um, well, <laughs> before we got our new pet, it was astonishment because they're like, I've never seen a cat on the truck. Well, now they pretty much overlook her for the other one. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you explain. We have a new addition to your truck. You want to explain your new addition? <laughs> um, yeah, so basically what happened, I was contacted by a friend, fellow flatbed trucker, and a member of uh, the Division of Natural Resources who um, helps her local vet with uh, rehoming this certain style of animal um, when they end up becoming orphaned in the wild. And uh, the way she does it, she takes them in and she gets them healthy and old enough to survive and then lets them choose whether they want to stay with her or if they want to go. And uh, so basically our new addition is Rocket, who is a baby raccoon. <laughs> I, I, Rocket is so cute. I mean, the first pictures I saw was you guys bottle feeding Rocket. Yeah, he doesn't bottle feed anymore. Now he, we, we weaned him really quickly, and uh, no one ever told us. You know, they, we, we did a lot of reading up on it, and you know, everyone's mentality seems to be, "Oh, they're cute, but don't get one." You know, put them back in the wild. They're wild animals, and uh, after about a week or so with him, we, we can kind of say, uh, "Yeah, they 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 were right. Like they're wild animals. Don't try to keep one." unless you know what you're doing and have a high amount of patience because they are, they are basically a five-year-old um, level intelligence and curiosity mixed with like Edward scissor, scissor hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I am covered in scratches and claw marks and bite marks. Okay. So um, the question of the day is now does peanut and rocket get along yet? Um, when we first got him, Peanut didn't like him at all. Like, he was curious about her um, because the person who had him had dogs, so he was kind of used to animals. But she was straight up like, uh, this is my house, get out. <laughs> um, we've had him for about two weeks now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and after about two weeks, Peanut has finally got to a point where they can get nose to nose and sniff each other and... And she, she'll stand there for a little bit, and then she backs off and starts swatting them a little bit, and they play, and they have fun. But um, she's still a little bit cautious about him because raccoons love water, and so he has a big pan in our truck. Uh, basically, it's his own little swimming pool, and he uh, he basically gets soaking wet and then goes after her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's funny. Oh, gosh. I've seen the videos of Rocket. He is adorable, but he looks hyper. He is. Um, yeah, they have periods, <laughs> um, especially early, especially in the morning and at night, where they get extremely hyper and bounce around. And when a raccoon bounces around, he's going to make a mess. And that's been my hardest thing. I'm really OCD about my truck being clean. And I go from basically vacuuming you know, three times a week to like every day because every day you wake up and there's litter everywhere, water, just everything. And you're like, Oh, why did I do this? <laughs> You've got a zoo on your truck. <laughs> Pretty much. Although you, it doesn't smell like one because, uh, 
we use Cincy, and so yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> we use Cincy also, and uh, yeah, we love it. Thanks, Lori. You got us addicted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. All our fault. <laughs> we love her. Speaking about Cincy, I just learned a new thing that they have a dryer sheet that's not a sheet. It's like a piece of plastic that goes in yeah. the dryer. Yeah, we used it. One. I love it. Oh, yeah. You can use it like 10 times, 10 different loads or something before it even starts to wear out. Which is convenient for us being out here on the road because then you don't have to use a fabric softener bottle when you're doing your laundry. Yes. Right now. Your dryer sheets. Yeah, they need to uh, come out with like a you know, 15 load washer disc. You just throw yes. it in there and be done. <laughs> yes. Of course, oh, God. You, you know, truckers will throw like four of them in there anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. So Teresa, I was going to ask you, so I know you've been out here for about nine months. What has been the biggest adjustment for you for living out here and, you know, adjusting to life out on the road? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, if, Anyone knows what a go girl is? That was probably the biggest adjustment, and a bottle. <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> said. <laughs> you know, I think that's, that's the hardest part to is learn. going to the bathroom out here. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, but we got them figured out. Um, but just the, I'm still learning um, with this job about uh, putting a load together and everything, um, strapping a load. Um, that's, that's a big one. She's, she's been amazing at teaching me. She, um, she's been basically teaching me in baby steps and which is good because, you know, that way I didn't get like overwhelmed or anything. Um, because any other job, usually I can get down pat in six months. It takes way more than six months to learn this job. <laughs> oh, it really does. <laughs> and, 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 but I love it. I love being out there with her. I, I love getting dirty and, you know, even getting fifth wheel grease on my hand, it's okay. You know, I, I it, it's never bothered me. Speaking of which, fifth wheel grease, we have homemade wipes that take that stuff off like it's yeah. nothing. Yes. Yes, you do. You give, you gave me some. They worked really well. Yeah. Well, I and have to say, well, one of the things I love the most about your relationship is is that, Kiara, you, I love the fact that you teach her every element of the job so that she feels part of it, too. And like I said, when I first met you, your hands were just as beat up and dirty as Kiara's because you're right <laughs> out there with her. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And to be honest, when she got on my truck, I told her, I don't expect you to be out there during the wind and the rain with me. I don't expect you to do everything I do. And then, you know, fast forward till now, I can't get her to stay in the truck. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things with, you know, having seizures sometimes, like, I have to take a day's rest, and it drives me insane to stay in the truck while she's out there tarping. I gotta chase her around with a dang winch bar. Get back in that truck. You <laughs> okay, I can totally see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> well, I did want to mention real quick uh, before we get ready to go to break um, for those of you guys who are on TikTok you guys can catch uh, Kiera hers is pink underscore phoenix and Teresa's TikTok is gypsy turtle one and together they have one called the diesel dykes and we'll get more into your Facebook and everything um, when we get back from our break here in a few minutes uh, but I just wanted to make sure we got those mentioned real quick <laughs> and then oh, also yeah, go real ahead. quick, we, we also need to specify we spell dykes with an I, not a Y. Oh, yeah, so they can find you, yes. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. We'll be back in just a few moments with Kiara and Teresa. continuing to give it power over the system. So what do we need to do? The splinter always needs to be removed. The trauma always needs to be dealt with. And that is to remember it, to feel it, to express it, and finally to release it. In my book, Keep Pain in the Past, I explain how we can deal with old, painful traumas and finally put them away for the first time 
and get on with our lives. Just like removing the splinter from my toe. Ready for the power of positive and something that will put you back to a time you wanted to last forever? Music is the ultimate time machine. What was your favorite time? Do you want to go back there? LTD Radio features the songs of the 70s, 80s, and 90s that will transport you to a happier time. It'll make you smile and brighten your day. We could all use that about now. TNCRadio.live is proud to carry the great music of LTD Radio. Catch Landline now every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, along with an encore presentation weekdays at noon, right here on TNCRadio.live. Welcome back. You're listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs. I'm your host, Angie. And I'm still Larry. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that was a pretty cool uh, thing with, with rock, rock, rocket? rocket, rocket, yeah, rocket. I've heard that those guys can be very mischievous. Uh, has he had any uh, incidents where he's like, you tell me no, I'll show you. Um, yeah, actually, uh, recently, just a couple of days ago. So I have a, uh, I have an addiction, you know, I, unfortunately they don't have a, uh, you know, anonymous group for it. I usually keep a gallon sized bag of Jolly Ranchers on my dash because um, I don't like to eat during the day. And if my blood sugar drops, well, the truck stops. So um, I eat Jolly Ranchers all day. And um, Rocket, you know, raccoons love sweets and they love, you know, working for their food, like finding something and getting into it. So Jolly Ranchers were are one of his favorites. Well, being as I'm addicted to him and he doesn't need to be full of sugar, I would tell him no and pull him out of it. So one night, apparently he remembered after we went to bed, he climbed up on the dash, got into my bag of Jolly Ranchers, took one, turned around and proceeded to have a nice good poop in my bag. (laughs) However, if it would have been just that, I would have seen it and been fine. He took it a step further and, um, covered it with Jolly Rancher so you can't see it. And it's a it's a sealed bag so you can't smell it. So the bag wasn't sealed but it was closed. And you know, I was getting ready to start driving and reached my hand in to get a nice big Jolly Rancher and came back with um something that made me feel not too jolly. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that's not quite what I said, but you know. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. this is a PG show, and I can't say what I said. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, that guy is uh, Mark. <laughs> yeah. We talked a little bit at the beginning of the show about how um, you recently decided that you wanted to. Um, start living as a woman and so one of the things i love the most and i think people might be interested in especially if they follow you on tiktok is you know it's it's hard first of all um for you to get ready in the morning it takes you about an hour long but what's cool about it is you live stream it so that everybody can see how hard it is for you and what your daily routine and process is you want to explain a little bit to everybody um yeah so Being transgender, or as the medical terminology goes, um, I suffer from gender dysphoria. And so there are certain things that kind of set me into a type of anxiety attack, which is um, facial hair, body hair, um, things like that. So I have a routine that I do in the mornings, um, although I haven't done it for a couple of days because I'm pushing myself. But um, so, you know, I do my makeup and everything in it. I have to use, you know, two different foundations, two different powders and everything else like that to basically hide the uh, discoloration that was on my face. Because I say was because um, not wearing makeup, my face has begun to tan a little bit so you don't see it as much. But um, 
I live stream everything because, you know, I'm transitioning. So my hair hasn't fully grown in yet and I wear wigs. So I go live with no makeup on, uh, no hair, just basically me in the raw. And um, it started out as me pushing myself because, you know, I believe that if you have something that bothers you or that you're scared of, you should always push yourself to face it and overcome it. So I go on, I go online and uh, I let people see me in the raw talking about what I'm doing. And I've had probably 10 different people who are transgender um, actually come out to me because they watched my live stream and it gave them the courage to be themselves. And then I've also helped a few other people with their makeup and not all trans people either. I've had some cisgender women who were like, Oh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. And actually one, you know, very well, uh, mm -hmm. granny TJ. Yep. I asked for eyeshadow tips too. <laughs> hey, I told you watch my lives. Like, I do. I watch your lives. <laughs> I watch them too. They're very interesting. Yeah, he'll always say, "Hey, Pink Pink," and he'll go like, "Hey, Kira's on. Pink 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 Pants is on. Get over here, and watch her." <laughs> well, you know what, Larry? I, I can do so much for you. We can highlight your eyes, and we'll get you some foundation, get you some fake eyelashes, and I think <laughs> I have the per the perfect shade of lipstick for you. Awesome! I'm there. <laughs> Except with the eyelashes, I think mine are already long enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, honey, your, your, eyelash, your eyelashes are never long enough. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I had noticed, you know, when I do my my trucker safety diva show, we've kind of tackled this topic, and I, I wanted your guys' opinion on both of you guys. One of the things I have the hardest time finding is it does not seem to be a big support system for the LGBTQ plus community, as far as trucking goes, as far as truck drivers who are in this community, there just doesn't seem to be a good support system out there. Not a lot of resources. Have you guys also noticed that? Yeah. Um, me personally, um, it bothers me a lot that we are living in, in, in the day and age that we're in. And yet it kind of seems like the trucking world is still back in like the seventies because you know, you hear a lot of comments about women and LGBTQ and all this other stuff, but yet, you know, there, there's, it, it's hard to find somebody who will go out of their way and be like, Hey, I'm in that community. This is me, you know, and it, it's really hard to find when they get accepted by the community. And it, it drove me up a wall. It's why I started my Facebook. Well, it's why we started our Facebook group, the diesel dykes as you know, a place where, people could come in and, you know, feel at home. And actually I've, I've had a, uh, a, from the outside, completely, um, cisgender man who old school trucker, rugged, you know, uh, hammer down kind of guy. And he saw something I posted on Facebook and asked me if I was transgender. I told him, yeah. And then waited for the blowback. And in actuality, he ended up coming out to me as a crossdresser. That's one of the things I was going to say to you. One of the things I've noticed over the last three or four years since I've been trying to be more active in the trucking community, I think a lot of truckers who are part of this community are too scared to come out because it's such a masculine and male dominant field and to come out and say, okay, yeah, I'm gay or, you know, I'm transgender. I think so many truckers are scared to label themselves that way for not being accepted. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, and Teresa can tell you a story, some stories, but um, when, you know, she was raised and she currently is Mormon. And so when, when she went into this, you know, relationship with me, um, she had a lot of people who were um, really supportive. And then she had a lot of people who were uh, a few people who were very, very not supportive. You want to talk about it? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we would be defined um, as being lesbian together. And mm -hmm. that's not something that if you are part of the, um, any sort of Christian or religious community, it's not, uh, it's frowned upon as they would say. And so already, you know, the community that you grew up with, um, unfortunately 
dissipates quite quite quickly and there's very very few uh left standing uh to support you although it's been interesting that people have uh, that i didn't think would be supportive were and and vice versa um you know we get you know not just in the trekking community but we get on tiktok we get on social media and we are um you know they say rude comments they say rude things and hurtful things and it's it's tough but we know who we are and we know what we want to do and we're you know we we're out we don't get offended too easily so we just want to focus on you know maybe helping educate people because i think it's out of fear mostly that people respond um and the fear of the unknown or the fear and sometimes really strange in some of the religious communities they think that it's contagious somehow um <laughs> but right it's, it's not and it's just understanding we're not telling you how to live your life don't tell us how to live ours that's that's the biggest thing we're just out here trying to live our lives trying to make a living like everyone else trying to you know do whatever we can do to just be happy and that's what everybody wants and what, what's that yeah thank you <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And and I'm sure that you guys have dealt with your fair share of naysayers out there. Yeah. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with Kira and Teresa. Keep your eyes on us and your ears on the road. <laughs> Remain focused on the road regardless of weather and traffic conditions. That's not always true of the drivers behind you. Every nine minutes, another commercial vehicle is rear-ended by a driver failing to control their speed. And guess who gets the blame? When you have to brake quickly, Tailbone illuminates a series of bright red LED lights that allow the driver behind you to react up to 50% faster. Using amazing accelerometer technology and a battery that will last for years, Tailbone meets the standard set by the NHTSA and the FMCSA. Learn more by visiting www.frontlane.com slash tailbone. That's www.frontlane.com slash tailbone. Approved in all 50 states, it's Tailbone by Frontlane. Budgeting tips for over-the-road truck drivers. Budgeting can be rather overwhelming at first. It requires a plan and self-discipline. But there's no need to be scared. Once you get the hang of budgeting, it'll become easy and will no longer feel like you're restrained from your finances. It's a good feeling to know exactly how much you're spending and where your money's going. Start budgeting today, and you'll begin to save money and see a difference in your finances. Here are some great budgeting tips for over-the-road truck drivers. Know your why. The first step to creating a budget is understanding your why. What is your reasoning for creating a budget? What do you want to accomplish? Are you trying to pay off debt? Are you trying to save for a big purchase? Or are you just wanting to be more conscious of your spending? Knowing your why before creating a budget will help motivate you and keep you on track. Set goals. Setting goals will help you achieve your why. To pay off debt or to save a specific amount, you need to know how much you need to be saving and budgeting each month. It's much easier to save and budget when you have a specific goal. Saving just to save does not always keep you motivated. Know your income. Since drivers typically get paid by the mail, drivers have a fluctuating income. Unless you have a dedicated route, your paychecks will vary. Drivers with a set income have a much easier time creating their budget because they know the exact amount they're bringing in every month. If you have a fluctuating income, it's best to know your baseline meaning you need to know the bare minimum expenses that you need to cover every month. Analyze your spending. Next, you'll need to analyze your spending habits. You can do that by looking at your bank account and examining where you're spending most of your money. Are you spending most of your money at truck stops, fast food restaurants? Another great way to evaluate your spending is to make a list in a notebook or your cell phone 
for every purchase you make throughout the month. Keeping track of your spending will not only give you an idea of how much you're spending each month, it will also make you more mindful of your spending. Needs versus Wants When budgeting, it's important to know the difference between needs versus wants. Things you need as a truck driver. Food, place to sleep, clothing, toiletries. Things you may want. Entertainment, TV, video games, computers, Netflix or Hulu subscription. Accessories for your rig. As a budgeter, you need to pay attention to your needs first and save for the things you want. Set a limit. Setting a spending limit is the best way to keep yourself from overspending. Write down all your necessary living expenses and keep in mind how much you want to save each month. Then determine how much you want to spend. A good method to help you set a limit is the envelope system. Budgeting takes time and self-discipline. It's not easy at first, but over time, it will become easier and easier. It's Truckers Life Radio from TFC Global with your host, Ron Frazier. Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Here we're helping drivers as they travel life's highway. I love that. The spiritual side, drivers face a lot out on the road. Truckers Life Radio digs in on the spiritual and moral questions that drivers face on a daily basis. You don't want to miss it. Every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm Ron Samuels. We put it in reverse gear so you can enjoy the history of popular music and hear the soundtrack of life Wednesdays at 8 Eastern and 7 Central right after the train station on TNCRadio.live. Welcome back. You're listening to Taillights with the Bombs. We just want to remind you that coming up next, we have Clutch Time Sports. It's going to be hosted with Ivan and Joshua. So if you're a big sports fan, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned and listen to those guys. And we also want to remind you that you can follow Larry and I on Facebook. We live stream our lives over the road on a trucker's view. And then you can also follow our page, Married to the Road, and find out a little bit more about Larry, our life, and um, our puppies on the road. (laughs) Kara and Teresa, we've been talking with you guys as our guests. And I want to give you a chance um, before I I got one more question for you guys. I want to give you a chance just to tell everybody where they can find you guys out on social media. Well, um, on TikTok, I am uh, pink underscore phoenix underscore. And Teresa is gypsy turtle one. Um, and then we also have uh, our page together. It is the underscore diesel dice spelled with an I. So D I K E S. Um, and then we also have our Facebook page, which is the diesel dikes. And then we also have um, Brace the Rainbow which is support for supporters of the LGBTQ community. Absolutely. And you guys are going to start live streaming on a trucker's view. So you guys can see them on there also. Uh Yes, we are. (laughs) (laughs) So I wanted to ask you guys, you at care, you had mentioned something about a story about a guy trying to break into your truck. Yep. Yep, that was um, the gentleman at the TA who was uh, trying to get into my truck when I uh, was waiting and I had to tell him a little fib. Um, but we also had an incident not too long ago in uh, Wis- why, yeah, Wisconsin. I always mix those two up. In uh, Wisconsin, just over the border, some guy was uh, asking for money. And, you know, it's at every truck stop. Somebody comes and asks you for money and you tell them, no, I don't carry cash or whatever, or you give them money. Well, I don't carry cash. So that's what I told him. And then he goes, well, how about cash app? And of course, my red flags went up because, you know, you're begging for money and you have cash app. Mm, I, I don't trust you. Yeah. So, um, we kind of, I told him, no, go basically politely to go away. And, um, I got back in my, got back in the truck and, you know, we're doing our thing. We had our curtains pulled and all of a sudden we hear banging on the back of our truck. Um, and this guy had gone around our truck 
trying to get into our truck and steal my flatbed tools. Oh he, my goodness. And luckily I lock everything up, but he, he actually snapped one of my bungees that hold my coil racks on trying to steal those, which I have no clue why anyone wants to steal those, but, um, he couldn't get those down. And so he tried to get in the headache crack and actually almost broke the lock trying to get it open. And, uh, when, when I finally got out there, you know, he was long gone. Fast forward about a week later, we saw the guy at another truck stop begging for money too. Oh my gosh. So this is a thing for him. Oh yeah. And he saw me wrecking. He didn't recognize me right away. Cause I was wearing a different wig, but when I took my glasses off and kind of looked at him and they raised an eyebrow at him, he kind of realized who I was and, it looked like the road runner took off running. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. I, I am sure he was scared. He's like, Oh no, she knows my gig. <laughs> well, I also, you know, that day I was wearing a sleeveless shirt and I mean, my arms are not tiny. No, they are not. <laughs> 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 I got a bear hug from you. I know how strong your arms are. <laughs> that was that wasn't even full strength. I didn't want to hurt you. <laughs> oh, we want to thank you guys so much for being on the show. I did want to just tell everybody, you know, we want to thank Teresa and Kira for being so open and honest. Because, like we had said earlier, there's just not a r- enough representation representation of the LGBTQ plus community, and to come out here and be so honest. Truly, I implore you guys to go to TikTok or Facebook. Follow these two ladies. They're so inspiring, and Larry and I know them personally and love them to pieces. Yes, they are amazing, amazing label. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And don't forget that you guys can follow them on TikTok one more time. Pink underscore Phoenix underscore Gypsy Turtle one and then Diesel Dyke spelled with an I. And then also on Facebook, you guys can find them at Brace the Rainbow and Diesel Dykes. And next week on our show, we're going to have Bobby Coffee and his husband. And they are actually, um, oh my gosh, I just totally lost the trucking company they work for. They have a beautiful new sleeper truck that um, just got, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. But they'll be on our show next week. And they've got a great LGBTQ plus uh, Facebook community they run and offer a lot of support to the community as well. So I think, is there anything else I forgot? I don't think so. Nope. All right. Well, we want to thank you so much, Teresa and Kara, for being a part of our show. We truly appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. And don't forget to stay tuned, guys. Our show coming up next is going to be the Clutch Time Sports with your hosts, Ivan and Joshua. And so if you're a big sports fan like Larry, who's your team, Larry? Raiders! <laughs> he likes messing with Ivan and Joshua because they're not Raiders fans. So Steelers. <laughs> Steelers. Steelers. <laughs> Steelers.